Today I want to talk about making plates. They're a form I quite enjoy making. I find centering lots of clay into a low puck fun, and that is pretty much the most important step of making plates. I'm throwing with Laguna's B-Mix here, the Cone 10 version, and this clay is one of my favorites to work with for a number of reasons, but part of it is that it doesn't have particularly good memory. And that sounds like it would be a bad thing, but it means that I can do things with this clay that you can't do with a porcelain. So this means I'm able to throw my plates not on a bat, and I'll show you at the end how I get them off of the wheel. I'm throwing these plates with about three to three and a half pounds of clay. First steps of throwing are the same as they are with any other form. I'm going to get my clay attached to the wheel head, and I'm going to cone up and down a few times. I like coning because it allows me to help center my clay in fewer steps than if I was just trying to center the lump straight away. So I'm going to cone my clay and then I'm going to start forming a low wide puck. This takes quite a while because you're trying to keep your clay centered while trying to make it nice and wide. To do this most effectively, you want to have one hand supporting the outer edge of the clay and the other pushing almost straight down but at a slight diagonal across the top of your puck and pressing down fairly aggressively. Doing this should create a nice low wide puck with the edges at the very top being slightly in from the edge at the bottom. So to word this another way, the base of your puck should be slightly wider than the top level or the area that you're putting pressure with your hands. You don't want that top level to balloon out over the outer edge. That will get you a very uneven and inconsistent base to start your plate with. I like to start my puck with a nice little angle on the side, which prevents me from having too many cracking problems when I do the next step. Overall, the goal here is to get this puck as wide as you want the base of your plate to be. It's difficult to make things wider than the puck you start with, so you want your base to be as wide as you want it to be at this point. You also want to make sure that the top part of your puck is nice and flat. If it's not, it will make the next step much harder. Moving on to the next step, I have a little bit of an angle change here so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. After making sure my wheel is moving nice and quickly, I'm making sure that my puck is nice and flat and that the edges are nice and centered. And then, this is just how I do my plates. This is not how everyone does theirs, but I'm going to start by opening my plate. I'm going to very carefully do a little divot in the center, making sure not to go too far down. I do trim the base of my plates. And then I'm going to very carefully open that divot all the way across the whole base of the puck. You have to make sure that when you're doing this, you are dragging your finger very flatly so that you don't have any lumps in the base of your plate because what you've just done is formed the bottom of your plate. I always do this in multiple steps because as you can see, I'm creating a little lump that I'm moving from the center of the clay to the rim and forming the lip of the plate while doing this. You have to be careful not to pull this little lip off and so while I'm doing this, I'm compressing slightly. So I'll, sometimes I'll stop and do this in multiple stages and compress in between to make sure I don't pull it all the way off. Once you reach the outer edge of the plate, I like to make sure I compress the little lip that has formed downwards because sometimes it's a little bit thinner or a little bit thicker than the outer edge of the plate. And this kind of brings this lip into equilibrium and makes it all the same. One of the next most important steps is making sure that the base that you've just formed is completely flat. To do this, I start by running my sponge over it. I also run my chamois over it. I'm just feeling for any inconsistencies or lumps and bumps that were formed when I was making that pull across the plate. Once I've sorted out the little lumps and bumps that I can with my sponge and chamois, I move on to compressing it with a rib. I start with a yellow mud tools rib and I use that fairly aggressively using the kind of rounded edge to push in fairly hard and compress the base of this plate. Compression is important, not because it helps prevent cracks, but it does help align the clay particles and make for a nice, smooth base of your plate. I like to start with the yellow rib, but then I move on to my metal rib, and I'm being fairly aggressive with both of these. I like the texture that it leaves behind, and it's nice and soft and smooth while being very flat. One of the other important roles using the rib like this place is it helps remove water. Having your plate be too wet will cause cracking. 
So this is also assisting me in making sure that my plate is not too wet. Once I finished compressing the base of the plate, I'm gonna move on to throwing the little lip. And I throw the lip directly upwards. I just make a pole with that little bit of clay that's left over. Typically one, sometimes two, just enough that I've got a little bit of height. It looks like on this plate I made two poles, and then I used my finger to make sure the lip of my plate was nice and smooth and round. Now I'm taking my metal rib and making a slight undercut at the bottom of the plate. This is important for later and you want to do it at this stage where it's very difficult to get your plate off of the wheel head. I'm also removing any excess slip from the outside edge of the plate because I'm done throwing it at this point. Now the very fun step of pushing that lip down to create my rim. Because I'm not going to leave the rim like this. This is a serving dish at this point, not a plate. So very carefully taking my metal rib and holding it against the edge of the plate, I just push downwards in one swift motion. And I just do that until I'm happy with the angle that the lip is at. Looks like I needed to do it twice with this plate because I wasn't quite happy with where the plate ended up. So I just fussed with it a little bit until I had a rim that I was happy with. And as you can see, when I do this, I'm not doing this from the very base of the plate. I am leaving a tiny little step there. This does make trimming my plates a little harder, but I really like the way it looks. So that's kind of how I throw a plate. I do go back in and compress and clean things up and mess with it a little bit because that's the kind of potter I am. I can never leave things alone, want them to be perfect. But it's fairly simple and it works really well for me. The hard part now is getting the plate off of the wheel. To do this, I'm going to hydroplane it off of the wheel head. So to start, I'm going to cover the wheel head with water anywhere that the plate is not, being very careful not to get the rest of my plate wet. I find that using my small sponge is the best way to do this. I just hydrate the sponge and then very carefully press it in multiple places around the wheel head. After doing that, I take my wire tool and same as you would do any other time, I cut the plate off of the wheel. You have to be very careful to keep your wire tool very level and flat when you do this, pressing it very hard against the wheel head. And after a couple of passes with my wire tool, the plate is now detached from the wheel. I can then very carefully slide the plate off of the wheel head and into my hand and kind of catch it with my hand, wrist, and like forearm, and then carefully slide it onto a board. Because my clay doesn't have a ton of memory, that little wobbling and warpage that you kind of see when I pick up the plate doesn't translate to the finished product. And when I trim it, you can never tell that I did that. So this is how I throw and make plates. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.